Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel uh, and welcome back to another video with the little one series BMW. Uh, what we're going to be doing in this video, as the title suggests, is we're going to be replacing this uh, centre console unit, which as you can see looks a bit, uh, just look a bit tatty, a bit scratched and um, you know, you know, there is a little bit of damage on there, but you know, this car's um, this car's pushing on a little bit. It's done a, done a few miles, um, and what we're going to be doing is replacing it with this one, which I got from a breaker yard, which has the cup holders included. Um, one of the little things about this car that does annoy me when uh, when I do use it to go to work, um, when my wife isn't using it, that is, uh, is the fact that it doesn't have a cup holder. I do like to have a coffee with me in the morning, um, and a lack of cup holders is a bit of a pain, especially on a manual car. Uh, on an auto, it wouldn't be so bad um, because you don't have to put the cup down as much, but not having any cup holders in this car is, uh, is something that we're gonna rectify here. Okay, if I put that down a second, we'll talk about the tools we need. Okay, uh, in order to do this, we need 10 mil socket, a T20 Torx bit, obviously a ratchet to go with those. We will need a pry tool, a plastic pry tool. Now, um, you may be tempted to use a screwdriver to pry uh, trims and stuff like that up, but a, tr uh, a screwdriver is very, very destructive. So avoid it if you can and use something plastic that won't mar the plastic of the, uh, of the trim. We will need a uh, tie wrap later on. I'll um, show you later on where we'll need that. It'll become apparent later. And obviously we'll need a set of uh, settled little set of snips um, for the tie wrap. Anyway, I think we've waffled on enough. Let's, um, let's get amongst it, start taking the old one out so that we can fit the new one. <laughs> Okay, so where we'll begin, um, I think we'll start with the gear shifter. Now, the gear shift gator just pops out. It is a little bit tight, but it pops out just like so. A um, couple of clips either side, uh, and yeah, just if you just give it a little bit of pressure, it will um, it will bend and uh, allow you to pull it out. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, just grab hold of the gear knob and give it a good tug. If it's an auto model you've got, then it is slightly different. I don't have an auto model to demonstrate on, but I'm pretty sure um, it's a case of pushing in on the button and then pulling. Um, although I can't remember, um, it's been a while since I've had a play with an auto uh, gear knob. Okay, so that's that out. We'll pop that down there out of the way. Next, what we're gonna look at is this silver trim just here. And again, give it a little tug all the way around and that pops out as well. Now under here, you can see we've got access to a couple of screws. We've got a couple of 10 mil bolts just here, here and here, and there's a couple of uh, torque screws in there. We don't need to remove those torque screws in order to take the center console out, but we will need to remove them in order to get this trim piece out here. So what we'll need to do first is remove the ashtray, um, and we'll take that out as well, uh, along with all the loose change. I'll pop that down there. Okay, just here, we've got a plug. Just undo that and leave it to one side for now. Okay, next what we're gonna do is we're gonna move back and look at the uh, rear armrest. Okay, here at the back of the rear armrest. Now, obviously not every car has a rear armrest. It's only if it was specced with one in the first place whether it'll come with one, unless you've obviously retrofitted one. If your car has a rear armrest, this trim with your plastic pry tool will simply push off backwards. You can see these little clips holding it in into these here. Literally just push it backwards in that kind of a direction and it will pop off. If your car doesn't have an armrest, the trim doesn't come off in that manner. Basically what you need to do is it needs to come upwards before it will come out because it's got little hooks on it. So just bear that in mind. If you don't have the, uh, the rear armrest upwards before coming back with the uh, rear armrest, straight backwards and it will come off perfectly fine. Now we've got that off, you can see here, we've got another nut there and another nut there. So we'll come on to those very, very shortly. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at this area down here, both the handbrake and the aux port. And you'll notice here, there's a little cap. So that's where we're gonna concentrate our efforts next. 
Okay, handbrake. There is a hook at the front end here um, that hooks underneath the center console. So you need to remove it by prying it up from the back, just like so. You don't necessarily need one of these. If you give it a good tug, it will come up. Um, and there's the hook that I was talking about. Now, what we need to do is we need to remove the gator from the handbrake handle. And here is a tie wrap. And that is why we'll need one later on. So this one, we're just gonna snip it off and there we go snip that off and then the gator will just slide off leave it in that position because we're going to put it back on that way later on um you can't get away with just pulling it over and leaving it on because you cannot get the console off with that on it, it, i've i've tried it previously it just doesn't work no matter no matter how much you try okay next what we need to do is just remove this little the little trim here that one and inside there, we've got another 10 mil nut. So we'll undo that one shortly. Um, I didn't mention this one here underneath the gear gator, uh, the handbrake gator, should I say, another 10 mil nut just there. Okay, next, what we wanna do is remove the aux. This is the, the one that does, <coughs> there you go, we got it. Right, there's nothing under here we need to undo, but what we do need to do is remove the, the plugs. There we are. Yeah, there's no there's no nuts in, in there at all, um, but we do need to obviously disconnect those. Okay, so, as you can see, we've now got pretty much all of the, the fasteners holding the centre console into the car. Um, there are a couple more that we need to do in the footwells. We'll come on to those in a moment. One thing I do want to point out that may be different on your car if it is a uh, March 2007 car or earlier is that there will be a different trim around the stereo here. As you can see here, this is just one piece and one piece there. Um, March 2007 and earlier cars had a different trim panel around here that requires the removal of this decorative trim here. And again, to remove that, it's just a case of getting your, your uh, pry tool underneath. It's held in with a few pins with um, basically like some friction uh, bushes, for the want of a better term. Once that's off, that trim could be removed in exactly the same way. It's just a case of prying it off, being careful not to damage it. Uh, anyway, moving on, obviously this is a uh, post-March 2007 car, so we don't have to worry about that bit. What we're going to do next is we're going to get down into the um, passenger footwell, because there's a trim under there that we do need to remove next. Okay, here we are down in the uh, passenger footwell. Now, um, there's a trim under here, under this kick panel, that needs to be removed because it does cover, it does cover the side of the centre console. And you can see here, there is a little pull pin. We do need to remove that pull pin, and then also, up under here there's a screw just there and another screw just there those are the t20s i was talking about so we'll get them out um, and then what we also need to do is the same on the uh, driver's side um, the driver's side however is slightly different in that it has three uh, t20 screws instead of um, just two um, so that's worth bearing in mind uh, get in there Go. Yeah, uh, on the driver's side, it has the same pin in exactly the same place, obviously mirrored. Um, but instead of two T20 screws, there's three. Uh, but other than that, it comes out in exactly the same way. There's one screw. So yeah, as I said, the driver's side, uh, one, two, and then there's another one in the middle on that panel on the driver's side. With your pry tool, just get it onto this little pull pin, get it like so, give it a pull out, and then the outer part will move out just like so, and then just pop them together. Ready for reinstallation later, keep all the screws together, and there we go. Now, what we can do is pull the trim down, disconnect the, uh, the the light, the puddle light, and there we are. That is that trim removed. And then, as you can see now, this is uh, free to be 
removed from the car. So what I need to do is obviously go to the driver's side, carry out exactly the same process, making sure I remove all three screws and that plastic pull pin, and then we can get on with the actual extraction of the center console. Okay, there we go. Driver's side removed, and as you can see, there's three screw holes, and there's the hole for the little plastic push pin. Other than that, it comes out exactly the same way as the passenger side one does. Right then, next, what we need to do is, last little bit of trim to remove is this little cover just here on the side, and it uncovers a, another T20 screw. So what we'll do now is we will start to undo everything from the center console. And there is that screw, we'll pop it down there. Okay, next, what we want to do is start undoing all the bolts and all the nuts uh, and stuff around. So what we'll do is we'll start with the one by the handbrake. There we go, that's one. Next, the one just in here. Now this one can be a bit of a pain and it wants to fall inside. If it does, just bear in mind that you need to remember and recover it before, there we go, before you uh, put the new one back in. Next, the two right at the back that we uncovered by taking this trim off. One, and two. Two. Okay, next, the two bolts just at the front. Don't worry about the Torx bits, uh, the Torx screws, should I say. Sort them out once the console is removed. Because these little brackets, these little brackets here that these Torx screws go onto, or these Torx screws are actually holding these brackets onto the center console. And what we need to do is move those brackets onto the new one. As you can see, everything's gone a bit loose. There we go. So that is all the hardware removed from the, uh, from the center console. So now we should be able to uh, remove it from the car. Okay, to actually get the centre console out of the car, what we need to do is grab it at the back. Uh, anyway, just give it a lift like so. We may need to just get the handbrake and pull it up as high as we can, just so it clears. But pull it up at the back, pull the centre console rearward. May need to also put the gear, gear shifter pointing backwards. And then what we need to do is manoeuvre it over the handbrake handle, just like so. And... There we are, that is the center console removed. Okay, that was pretty straightforward. What we need to do with this center console, however, is we need to remove this um, silver panel with the ashtray in from the center console, and we also need to remove the rear armrest from the back of the center console. So we'll do that next. Okay, to remove the... Uh armrest from the center console what we need to do is remove a couple of screws now the whole unit itself is held in with some like form plastic hooks uh, which slot on but then held in that is then held in position once it's um once it's correctly mounted by two screws now ignore these two here these are of no relevance to it whatsoever you don't need to remove those what we need to remove is one just in there and one just in there so there again t20 and they're not actually overly tight so i'm able to just undo them without the need for my ratchet. And 
same with this side. Just like so. Okay, pop that down there. Next, now that those screws are removed, if I recover the two screws. There we go. She just fell off. Now, um, if you look here, you can see what I meant by the little hooks. Basically, it slots in and then slides up, and then that will allow those holes to align with the two holes here on the back of the center console. So basically, get those two hooks in these slots. Once in the slots, push it up, and the hole, the screw holes will align, and then you can fit your screws just like so. Right, next, the ashtray trim. Okay, for the ashtray trim, what we need to do uh, to get that out is literally just remove these two T20 torque screws. It really is that easy. The other thing we need to do back here is we need to remove this socket from, from the center console as well, because obviously this wiring loom is part of this. Um, now, there is a little, it's gonna be really, really difficult for me to show it on, um, on the camera, but there is a little, there we go. There you can see what I was what I was doing with this was I was just pushing that to one side and it allowed it to slide out. It basically just clips into place, pulling that to one side allows it to come off. And then all you gotta do is move the wiring from all the all the little hooks that it's um held into. Then remove the two screws. Now there is a washer on each of these screws as well, so just remember that these ones with the washers on are for this. And there we are. Now, if we turn it over. Just give it a little push to overcome the clips. And there we go. That is that removed. All good. Um, here's the little clips you can see that we were trying to overcome just there and there. They're, they're, quite, they're actually quite strong considering their, their size. So I'll pop that down there. And next, what we need to do is we just need to remove these two brackets. Um, that I mentioned earlier on because these need to go onto the new center console and that is all they are again there's another little washer just a little plastic washer underneath the screw head make sure we use the right ones because the threads on the screws are different and I've just dropped the bracket Let me grab that. there we go there we are there's the other one so that is that this is no longer required that is everything we need off of this center console so now I can dump that and go get the new one okay so here is the new center console um, what we're gonna do first is I'm gonna put the little brackets back in now that you can fit them, the, well, you can't. They will fit in either side, but you can't get them wrong because the the, uh, the slot in the bracket will only fit um, on one side. So get it in place, just pop the screw back in its hole. And the same for the other side. Now, what we're not gonna do yet is we're not gonna tighten these up because what I wanna do is obviously get the center console in position, make sure that the brackets are in the right place before we tighten them. Um, otherwise they may not they may not be in the right position for the bolts that hold it down onto these so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna nip them up to allow the brackets to move up and down still um, and then they'll get tightened once the uh, once the center console is fitted into position okay that's those next what we need to do just drop the cable through the hole and 
fit the ashtray trim back into place. It does need to go in kind of that sort of orientation because you can see at the front there's a couple of hooks. Just get them in like so. And then press it down until it clicks. And then as before, we take our screws. One and two. And simply tighten them up to retain the ashtray trim in place. And that is that. Right, next. Move the cable through its little holders and just slot the plug into position. And there we are, that is ready to accept this socket once we've reinstalled it. So there we go, that is everything that we need to install onto the center console now before um, fitting it to the car. So now we can actually move on to that step of getting it fitted into the car. Right, we're not gonna be putting it on the car yet because I completely forgot about the, uh, the rear armrest. As I said before, what we need to do, get the hooks in place just like so and then slot it upwards and then the holes align with the screw holes and then what we need to do is just get these screws into position which is going to be a bit of a peg because they're quite deep these channels there we go there's one and And there we are, that is the uh, rear armrest fitted onto the centre console. So now we can actually get the centre console fitted into the car. Okay, so to fit it, what we need to do, slide it forward. We need to get it over the handbrake as we did before. Obviously when we came to getting it out, we need to make sure the gear shifters again not in the way. And there we are, that is that. Now, uh, under here, what we need to do is just make sure that the two connectors that go to the aux port are through the holes and that they're not um, underneath otherwise we'll have uh, we'll have difficulty plugging everything back in and then eventually it will, it will fall forwards into the right place again the, the connectors have just dropped again make sure we get them there we go Again, for the one at the front, we just need to make sure we get that as well. And then, make sure everything is in the correct place and everything looks good. Okay, there we are. So, now what we need to do is take all of our bolts and nuts, screws, etc., and go around and install them. So the two bolts here, nut, nut, two nuts at the back, the little torque screw just in the side here and then once these two bolts are in then we'll torque and, and tighten then we will torque these um um tighten these torque screws up uh, and then everything will be held in place okay so i'll get all of those in uh but into the positions they came from and then we'll uh, bring it back and we'll get on with fitting the rest of the trim okay so there we are that is the center console how to curl in position by all of its fixings. Um, all we need to do now is go around and refit all of these trim pieces. So what we'll do, we'll start with the um, aux port and 12 volt socket. And it's simply a case of plugging it in. You can't get it wrong, it's only going one way. And then tucking the excess cable inside. 
and then we need to hook it in at the front and just pop it in at the back. This little cover it just goes in like so. There we go. This one down the side here, you can see it's hooked. And what we need to do is just put it in place and it will slot in. And there we go. Next is the, uh, the trim for the back. Now, this is where it fits. You can see these little lugs and there's like some spring clips on the back. So what you need to do is you need to make sure that it's arranged so that they all line up. And once they do, it should go on fairly easily. If they're not, if they misaligned, you'll know because it just won't, it just won't want to go in. And kind of like it is now, it's a bit, a little bit misaligned. quite fiddly because if it is even slightly misaligned it just won't go on side in but not both at the same time which is quite annoying there we go got there in the end Took a little bit of effort to get that one lined up, but we got there in the end. It took a, yeah, took a bit of, took a bit of wiggling around just to get. There's like um some little plastic tabs there. If they're not aligned, they it just won't go in. And you'll get the idea. It's a bit of a, bit of a pain. Right, we can stick our ashtray, and cigarette lighter, along with all of our change, back in there. Okay, what we'll do next is we will get the trim for the uh, for the gear shifter again it's just held in with these clips get it in get it aligned and just press it down just like so then the gear shifter get it on give it a good whack and it's in position and the gator just clips into place just like so okay next we'll move on to the handbrake gator Okay, handbrake gator. So, obviously that hook goes at the front, like I said before, and we've got it inside out as it currently stands. Now, this is where our tie wrap comes in, as I said before. Now, just on the back of the handle here, at the back of the leather section, you can see there's this little channel here with this lug. That, <coughs> excuse me, that is where the tie wrap goes. So, what we need to do is get the gator over the handbrake, like so and then just pull it back so that you can see the mark on the leather where the tie wrap used to be and then just feel so that that mark is over that slot and then obviously make sure that the stitching is aligned in the right orientation otherwise once it's done up it'll look odd okay once that's on what we can do is get our tie wrap and then and get it into the right place. Now, the, the actual nub of the tie wrap I'm gonna put so that it's underneath, out of the way. Otherwise, once we pull the, the uh, gator back, you'll have this little lump um, from the uh, from the lock of the tie wrap. And then, it's in position. And then just 
snip off the excess. Now, what we can do is pull it all back, just like so, and there we are. I think you'll agree that looks perfectly fine. Then, put the hook in at the front, and then that, as they say, is that. There we go. Sorted. I think you'll agree that that looks perfectly fine. And uh, yeah, fine and dandy. So what we need to do next is the uh, the two trims in the foot wells, driver side and passenger side, uh, two screws for the passenger side, one plastic clip, three screws for the driver side and one plastic clip. I'll get all of those in because they're literally, you know, um, the opposite of the way they came out. So I'll get that done. Uh, and then I'll bring you back uh, for, for the, uh, for the uh, final thoughts on this job. Okay, so there we are. That is the uh, the whole centre console reinstalled. I've done the uh, the two kick panels in the footwells, and uh, yeah, that is the job done. Here's my cut. Perfect. That's exactly what I needed. Um, not too taxing a job. Pretty straightforward. It's only a couple of screws and a couple of little plugs and things that you need to remove, um, and it's not uh, not too difficult at all. Obviously, we still retain our uh, centre console armrest um, with its little storage bucket in there. Um, yeah, and I'm, uh, I'm very, very pleased with it. The centre console itself, I got from a breaker. It's a breaker that I've used quite a bit in the past. Uh, I will leave a link to the breaker in the description. He had quite a number of them, actually, all in various various different price uh, price ranges, depending upon how scuffed they were. Because, I mean, there, there is a couple of little scratches on this one, but then the one that I removed also was quite scratched. So, you know, I'm not um, overly worried about that in the slightest. Um, yeah, hopefully you uh, you enjoyed this video. Um, it's pretty uh, pretty good one to uh, pretty easy one to make, not too difficult. Um, and obviously, I've now got the added functionality of cup holders, which this BMW One Series has been severely lacking uh, during our ownership. So, yeah, I'm uh, I'm very very pleased with that, and it'll make it much more easy to drive um, on my uh, on my commute should I take this car instead of the Seven Series. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for stopping by. Hopefully, I'll see you all again for the next video. You take care. Bye-bye now.